It's Monday. It's time for Marketing Monday Live. Hi, I'm Liesl. And Marketing Monday Live started just after the 27th of March, where every Monday we'd go live. You'd ask me marketing-related questions, branding-related questions, business-related questions, and we'd assist and help each other answering those difficult questions during the hard times that we faced here. During lockdown in South Africa, we've had viewers from all over the world, from Hong Kong, from New Zealand, from the States, from Italy, uh, from Ireland. And it's just been amazing that every single week live on Instagram, on YouTube, on LinkedIn and on Facebook, we can get together and ask and answer marketing related questions and help each other during these difficult times. So if you're new to Marketing Monday, this is how it works. Every Monday, I invite a guest that you've selected to join me on Marketing Monday Live to answer any of your questions relating to your business, to marketing, to social media advice, to launching a new product, to product packaging, to whatever it is that you're facing and the struggles that you're facing in your business. And I've always said this, it's not a two-way conversation with myself and the guest. It's a three-way conversation. So if you're watching from the office, from home, from anywhere in the world, you can pop into the comment section down below on whatever platform you're watching on and pose a question to our guest. If you don't have a question, you just like to make a comment or you just like to say hi, do so in the comment section down below. We normally start Marketing Monday Live with a way of giving back to small businesses in the community. And I want to know from you which marketing business or any business has really impressed you during lockdown. We've mentioned some incredible businesses over the last couple of weeks and uh, last couple of months that have really done incredible things. Small businesses that have started out because of lockdown, businesses that have pivoted and changed direction because their businesses weren't viable anymore. And uh, this is your time. So comment down below. Let me know if there's a business that really impressed you. Let me know where you're watching from. Say hi. I already see Kathy Luthwaite saying hi, watching uh, from Bloberg. Nice to have you watching live. Post your comments down below. Anton, yes, nice to have you. AWOL, A Way of Life. And I have to tell you that Anton Slubbert from A Way of Life uh, really transformed his business. He does uh, outdoor training in Camps Bay and Clifton. And during lockdown, he went online and hosted classes via Zoom to everyone all over the world. And he's still offering a few Zoom classes. So if you're somewhere in the world and you want to join him, and for those who are based in the Western Cape, especially in Cape Town, I had a great training session with him this morning. You can see images on my social media platform. So hi to Anton. Any other business that you are really impressed with during lockdown? Keep those comments coming as I introduce you to our guest that's going to be joining us. Uh, Jenny saying, I'm watching from work, my first time joining. Welcome, Jenny. Welcome to Marketing Monday Live. Our guest today uh, hails from Johannesburg and uh, studied at the same university I was at, at Tux, and uh, is the business executive officer for coffee and beverages at Nescafe. Uh, Nicole Riss, welcome to Marketing Monday Live. Great to have you joining us. Thanks so much, Lisa. What a wonderful way to spend a Monday uh, talking marketing. So thank you again for having me. And you've got quite a big portfolio. We're going to touch on exactly what you do, but tell us how it all started. How did you get into Nestle? How did you go from studying at the University of Pretoria into a role of marketing? Yeah, thanks. Thank you so much. Um, honored to share. So interestingly, I actually started at UP uh, in a dietetics background. So I come from a, a nutrition and medical environment. And um, sort of Nestle was always a very inspirational company for me uh, during during completion of my honors degree. I'm not sure if you're aware, but uh, Nestle employs the, the most number of dietitians in the globe. And it's really centered around that purpose of, of enhancing that quality of life. So for the longest time, I sort of was studying, but my I had my eye uh, on this very aspirational company um, to, to have a look at. And uh, interestingly, I managed to join their graduate program, but on the science side. And uh, as I was sort of rotating through the science platform, I touched on this really sexy environment of marketing. And I thought, oh, hold on a minute, uh, what is that? Uh, so much to the disgust of my family, after completing that degree, um, I actually made the change and uh, joined the commercial stream, left the science side and joined the commercial side uh, at that time on the infant nutrition uh, business, which is a very intricate, a beautiful topic alone uh, to speak about marketing as regulating in highly, highly controlled environments. And spent a couple of years there um, and then was fortunate enough to, to go to the US. In fact, Nestle had just acquired Gerber internationally and spent some time in the New York office, uh, three or four years, which was incredible. And um, wow. getting into a really fast-paced uh, marketing environment was, was just extraordinary. 
and then the boss called and said, uh, holiday's over, and then came back, <laughs> headed up the infant nutrition business uh, back then, and um, and then most recently um, made a change out from the infant side, where obviously I was using a lot of my background uh, in the science side to, to come into the, the hardcore uh, commercial and marketing stuff. And I've been heading up the coffee and beverages uh, business for the last four years. Uh, in that journey, I quickly realized um, just how, how quickly things had advanced digitally. And uh, I, I realized, you know what, I needed to go and brush up, particularly on the integration of, of marketing digitally. Um, and I've just recently uh, finished a global master's in digital business uh, with the University wow. of Barcelona in Spain, which was extraordinary. And what a way just to expand our global network, uh, looking at digitalization, but um, mostly around the change components, which I'm sure we'll get to chat about in a minute as well. Uh, we've got so many questions about the digital world, about the change components. I'm going to touch on that shortly. But talk to us about the time in New York, the comparison between how marketing worked in New York and, and how it works in South Africa. Were there a lot of similarities? Did you learn a lot? Did you share a lot uh, when it came to that journey and staying and, and working there? Yeah, thanks. Um, so firstly, just uh, an amazing deep dive uh, of an experience. Um, there are a lot of the fundamentals which are the same, you know, whether you're marketing here or you're marketing there, uh, very much identical. But then there are things that are distinctively different. And I think the first is the pace. Um, it's extremely quick and uh, things change literally, you know, every other day there are new competitive dynamics, new marketplace dynamics. That was the first. And the second major adjustment was the very litigious environment that you've really got to be, you know, really on top of your claims or top of your game. Um, and of course, ready for, for a pretty interesting competitive dynamic uh, when it comes to, to marketing there. But having said that, I really loved it. Um, the part that I also really enjoyed was just the caliber of marketeers um, and executives around us. I mean, really, really skilled professionals. And so there was just not a day that we were, we were not able to, uh, to learn as much. And then, of course, you know, walking down Fifth Avenue and then spending a day in the New York agency environment is just incredible. Um, and then <laughs> learning so much and uh, mm. just a lovely, lovely, challenging environment to, to grow and develop in. So we do have a lot of entrepreneurs that watch and a lot of that uh, business owners that have transformed their business, uh, especially with what we face now with the global pandemic. You've just finished a master's degree in digital globalization and digital, um, uh, the world of digital. What is the one thing that every business owner should know that has come out of the course that you studied? Yeah, I think it's just about managing the change curve. I mean, for me, it's it's about experimenting and um, you can lead that change by being on the front foot of literally taking micro risks. And those risks, to be honest with you, are they um, they are just so exciting. And I think that's that's a mindset change for us is that, you know, you need big money and you need big experimentation to be able to scale with digital. And I think I don't think that's the case at all. And I think if yeah. you whether I change mindset and uh, you're able to lead and experiment and literally just get that minimum viable product uh, ready and tested and experimented with. And the minute you see something work, you know, you can move to scale. That's for me the biggest take out. And you see amazing examples of organizations that just have the right change mindset, the right risk appetite uh, to go for it. And uh, to be honest with you, we are realizing that there is not an answer yet um, that digital hasn't solved. Mm -hmm. COVID's taught us that. Uh, even what we're going to chat about today, I mean, launching products virtually and in, in, in the COVID time, just amazing. Um, and so in so many ways, I've learned that uh, digital is happening and it's so exciting. <laughs> it's just about getting going, Would uh, I would say. We've had a number of, of uh, questions from viewers over the last couple of months that are so scared of digital, that are scared of social media, that are scared of, of just jumping onto any of those platforms. What word of advice can you give to business owners who are scared of showcasing not only their personal brands on social media, but their business as well? Yeah, I think it requires some maturity and self-awareness on wherever you are in your business journey. So, so knowing what you're really good at and knowing, you know, if you've got core strong digital marketing skill sets, then use those. But it also requires you to be self-aware that maybe we don't know or, or we need a partner or we need to find someone that really does know. So I think for me, the recommendation would be, you know, play to your core strength, um, but be quite humble and go and find the right person or the right partner or the right digital competence um, to be able to connect with quickly, to be able to do it together and scale it up. I mean, at Nestle, we're also realizing that there's some stuff that we know how to do really well. And then there's also some stuff that we're going to need, really advanced partnerships. Yeah. Um, be able to, to, to go and to take forward. So, 
yeah, it's exciting. And I think regardless of scale, you know, anyone can do that, whether you're a big global uh, FMCG like us or whether you're a young entrepreneur coming up and out um, into the into the new business world. Again, you know, unlock those partnerships, know when you've got it inside and when you can go externally and, and innovate using a partner model. A lot of people are so scared to reach out to those partners. So you've really given valuable advice. Uh, to ask the questions, find someone that you can partner up with and don't be scared to acknowledge where the business is lacking and where you do need assistance and help. So really vital advice there. Thanks, Nicole. Very brave of Nestle. I've actually got uh, the packaging here. You launched virtually and I sat in Cape Town overlooking the ocean when you launched the new Nescafe Gold uh, Vegan Latte range. And I don't do a lot of dairy, so that's why I'm a big fan of this. Um, but I wanted to ask you, from Nestle's point of view, we're just coming out of lockdown, worldwide pandemic, and you are launching a brand new product, Bravely. What? Tell us, talk us through the steps that would led to this, and uh, what was actually going on in the marketing office and on the business side uh, with Nestle and Nescafe with this product. Yeah, so I think firstly, you know, um, COVID has actually created some new trends. Um, I think there's just this heightened uh, awareness on on wellness, on sustainability, mm -hmm. on longevity, on on brands and, and brands with consciousness and purpose. And so that trend was always there, but I think COVID just, you know, put it on steroids. And so it was always something we, we were watching. Um, and we knew that this particular interest in plant-based, um, interesting, it, it's not uh, it's not just for some, it really is becoming a very interesting option. As consumers want more options, they want more uh, flexibility. They want to look at, you know, flexitarian options, vegetarian options, but it's beyond that. Um, it's also about making choices as consumers. Um, and so it was super exciting um, for us to look at this internet. It is an international trend um, and, and the move to plant-based is really on the back of that as consumers interested in, in longevity and wellness and of course having, having options if they are not able to take dairy or they want to follow a, you know, a, a tighter vegetarian or, or vegan-based lifestyle. So what did we learn? We learned um, staying on trend. Uh, we learned listening, 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 listening to what consumers mm -hmm. are really saying. Um, and then most importantly is being agile. I think, you know, as a brand team, we we had to realize that what we had initially thought was going to pan out, um, nothing of that happened. And so we had to almost recorrect campaigns and redirect messaging. Um, but again, it just comes back to relevance. And, you know, if you're going to put something new, particularly right now, out into the market, you know, your listening's really got to connect you with the right messaging at the right time. But we did that. And as you said, we had a wonderful virtual launch um, just a week ago. And we were super happy um, to introduce our new babies. So a range of of three vegetarian and plant-based lattes, but I think we're going to chat about them in a minute further. You've got them right there in front of you. So why don't you talk us through the three that are available? I already tell you now, before you even get to the coconut, I'm a big coconut fan, but I see a lot of people on Instagram saying oat is their favorite. And it's the one that I, I've still got to open. So I'm going to share this in the office today on our side, but talk us through the range. Yeah, I think the range firstly is based again on trends. So we had a look at, you know, when it comes to plant-based and, and flexitarian and vegetarian options, you know, what are consumers wanting? And really these these at the moment are the three out, uh, outstanding um, options. So as you said, we've got an absolutely gorgeous coconut, uh, beautiful decadent taste. But the difference here is often when consumers feel they need to follow a vegan lifestyle, that taste is almost like a trade-off, you know, that you're, you're yes. giving up to be yeah. able to have a great, great quality cup. And I think as Nescafe, we've always believed that um, the joy of our work is in giving consumers, every consumer, the option to enjoy a great and delicious tasting cup of coffee. So this one really nails it. Um, as you said, oat, you've yet to try it, but uh, a really firm favorite already in the portfolio. And what we love about it is um, it, gives, it gives options, of course, those that have specific allergies or really who, who cannot take dairy at all um, and who really are truly plant-based but also you know, sensitive to other issues. This one is for you. And then the final, my personal favorite, um, is, of course, the almond-based latte. And what we're most excited about here is that this cup uh, in mouth is just beautiful. So it's a blend of uh, sustainably sourced Arabica and Robusta coffees. Uh, it just gives you that amazing coffee mouth feel. Uh, but the decadence and the dairy note is, is beautiful. Um, and what we love about that whitening piece is, as we said, plant-based, creamy, indulgent, uh, and just finishes with a just really a great cup of coffee, an inclusive and great cup of coffee. 
Now talk us through the packaging because I know there are a few entrepreneurs that are watching online that have just relaunched some packaging themselves for smaller side businesses. How important is packaging and design for the team, especially for something like uh, the product like this? Yeah, I mean, you know, every second across the world, you know, five million people choose to drink a cup of Nescafe. So when it comes to our communication vehicle, packaging is still our biggest primary vehicle uh, for conveying messages um, in shape or, or way or form. So packaging is essential. Um, we're obviously seeing a huge heightened awareness on the role of packaging, particularly with respect to sustainability and our commitments. And um, of course, it's a you know whole theme in itself um, with respect to preparing as marketeers for this new chapter. Um, but for us, packaging as a carrier, um, you know, the essence of the brand absolutely comes alive through your choices in branding and architecture in, in packaging and substrate choices. Um, and so here, and again, you'll have a look, you know, a, a great example where the, the touch, the feel, the look, the essence of the brand um, is about plant-based and, and being you know sustainably focused and so those are things we've really tried to dial up um, in the current range. And also uh, you focus on sustainability and I, I love that the packaging and at the back you can see uh, recy the recyclable signs at the back. Uh, the only problem was with the sachets but I thought uh, instead of asking you about the recycling of the sachets I'll give a suggestion myself to anyone who's watching. What I've done with my sachets is I've popped them in my eco brick. And we've got eco brick collection points all over Cape Town. For anyone that doesn't know what an eco brick is, it's uh, you'll see a lot of people, two liter Cokes or empty one liter milk cartons, putting in any of their leftover tin foil or wrapping that cannot be recycled. You fill it up, you weigh it, and you drop it off at collection points. And that actually gets used to, to build schools, to build buildings. There's uh, great upcycle projects through that. So what I'll do is I'll post the, the, the details down below. Uh, that's my, my take on the packaging. That's just for the inside. And then uh, Nicola shared that the outside of the packaging is, is uh, responsibly sourced. Yeah, thank you. And you raised such a great point. Oh, what a lovely suggestion. I'm going to, I've written that one down. So thank you. I'm going to take that back to my <laughs> team as well. I think uh, just a word on recycling and um, you'll notice that just in general, of course, I'm sure in the marketing community, just everything to do with sustainability um, heightened awareness. So uh, an enormous amount of effort happening on our end, reuse, uh, rethink, uh, replace, regenerate, uh, all, all of that. In fact, we have a whole campaign at the moment that's just recently been launched on, on thinking re, uh, this concept of something old or something that was yours could be something that is of value to me and how we can really start to build more circular economies in our thinking. Um, so lots happening there. And uh, again, welcome some comments uh, from your listeners. You know, is there more that we could be doing or are there ideas as well that, that we haven't thought of? Again, speaks to an earlier theme of, um, of real interconnected partnerships. So in this case, for example, there is a lot of international work happening on, on laminates and the ability, for example, for that sachet stick to be made of either a mono or a fully recyclable um, solution. And again, lots happening, lots of ideation, uh, lots of testing and learning happening. And, and we will crack it. I'm very confident we, we will crack it for the long term. Um, but just, again, a great place. Again, is it right? Absolutely. Uh, we hold those answers as marketeers in our hands and in doing what's right now uh, for future generations. So we love that work. Um, it's taking up a lot of our thinking, but we believe in it and it's so true to our purpose. It's so great. You actually just answered Tony Seifert's question. He was asking how important is the recycling concept to packaging for Nestle. So that's just been answered. And I've shared some info about Eco Bricks and uh, where they go. Some great initiatives. We'll share that. Uh, comment coming through from Yaku Deploy saying and replying to comments that are coming through saying we just need to adapt. So it's just nice getting everyone's comments. Um, and uh, if there are any more questions while you're watching live on Facebook, Instagram, I'm trying to scroll through all the questions that we're getting. I'm chatting to Nicole Ruiz, Business Executive Officer for the Coffee and Beverages section for Nestle, talking about their new vegan and dairy-friendly range that uh, you can actually see on the screen right now. Nicole, uh, brainstorming a marketing launch that was going to go digital via YouTube and going live via YouTube with the launch couldn't have been an easy thing to, to plan. What were the steps that went into planning that incredible launch? And for anyone that missed it, what I'll do is I'll also share the link uh, on uh, the comment section down below. So anyone who didn't get a chance to see it live last week can actually watch because it's quite educational. 
Yeah, I think, um, firstly, you said it, it's planning. And uh, I think anything in the virtual world I'm finding uh, can be done. I mean, we've uh, we've actually been uh, working offline now and remotely uh, in a home-based work from home environment for just on eight months. Um, interestingly, there is not a digital solve uh, that we haven't come across for any kind of, of marketeer work. Um, so teaming work, collaborative work, um, you name it, we, we have found digital solutions. Um, so what's exciting for me is that, you know, even in a, in a virtual launching environment, it's absolutely incredible to see how many really cool ideas are out there. Like we said earlier, some of it is about taking some risk. Um, so what we did, for example, in this particular case is we have we have had some smaller scale launches where we've done almost like a minimum viable solution, which we tested and we learned from. Uh, we're, we're really big on learning logs and, you know, taking learnings. And, uh, you know, we see mistakes as full forwards and things we could do, do better or apply to other brands uh, going forward. So it was actually really a lot of fun. Um, I think the team was initially a bit nervous that all the, the various facets, you know, would interconnect. But, you, you know, it's amazing, again, you know, using digital as an enabler, um, just how connected we can actually be. Uh, as you said, you know, you were in Cape Town, we were in Joburg, we had influences from all across the country. Um, we were out, you know, socially distanced in a virtual uh, garden, um, you know, cooking up amazing vegetarian solutions. But again, it comes with the right partner, so right tech partner, right digital solution, a bit of experimentation, and of course, taking a bit of risk. Talk us through that garden because it was incredible. It was the perfect location to launch a, a plant-based product like this. Yeah, so we, we were in the gardens, in Beechwood Gardens, in the beautiful part of Hyde Park in Joburg. Um, but what we loved about it was more the symbolism of why we were there. And I think, you know, the the option of um, making smart um, food choices and, again, health choices that are right for longevity, a height for general, general wellness was for us as a team most critical. And so the garden is just insane. It's so beautiful. And um, what we, we loved about being there it was, again, just a reminder that consumers want options. Um, consumers want to be flexible in their own decision making. And our role as marketeers is to provide them um, with options. So being there again, uh, you know, just a reminder that brands need to really be inclusive. Uh, brands need to think about how we you know, we can carry everyone along uh, on our brand journeys. Um, and in this particular case, it was a no-brainer for us to have been there in the beautiful gardens and you know celebrating all things that are plant-based and this huge trend uh, to empowering consumers with more and more options, um, particularly when it comes to to flexitarian eating and and plant-based solutions. We've got a comment coming through from Wyomia saying conscious living and ethical consumption are essential for sustainability. And uh, Nestle, you're hitting the hammer right on the head with everything that we're chatting about. So thanks, Wyomia, for that. Then Karen from Sale asking, what does marketing look like in the 22nd century? Um, thanks so much, Karen. What an amazing question. Um, so a lot of my work is, is really there and, and us getting future forward and future ready. Um, I think what I see uh, in terms of, of future marketing is um, just complete personalization. So, for example, Corin, what you're going to be served and what I'm going to be served and be totally different. And it's going to be based on your need states and your dynamics and your preferences. Um, so we're super big on moving towards personalized um, marketing, personalized consumer content, uh, of course, fully integrated in the digital funnel. I think what we're loving about it as well is as, uh, as marketing investors is we're starting to see a lot of really, really interesting case studies about how efficient our marketing is becoming because we can be more targeted and we can be more specific. Um, and of course, serve our content that is just super relevant. Um, but in order to do that, we need to have, uh, of course, the right repertoire, the right content, and of course, be able to have the right back end and systems. Um, and so for us, what we're doing now is what's going to get us ready um, for that future marketing environment. But for me, uh, it's digital, it's integrated, it's personalized, uh, it's fast. Um, and there is a very high degree of, of sort of test and learn where we, we're learning, adapting, learning, adapting. So high agile, I would add. Thanks so much, Karen. Great question. Thanks, uh, Nicole, for answering that. And just to let everyone know, I have uh, posted the link to the Nescafe Gold Vegan Latte launch. So if anyone wants to see what went down, there we go. You can see it live. Question coming through from Italy. Uh, well, a statement saying spending time to study logs, insights and analytics is definitely worth it to get better results. Unfortunately, it's still quite an underestimated activity from Niccolo in, in Italy. And I, I'm sure you would agree. Yeah, what a great question. And I think if COVID's taught us anything, 
um, it's about creating learning logs, but agile learning logs. So, for example, we um, at the moment to to cope with some of our BCP thinking, we have this amazing uh, what we call a centralized learning log that anyone from the organization can can dive in, post an issue, post uh, post a log, post how it was solved. Uh, post how we think it could have been improved and everyone in the organization has the ability to uh, to to get into that so what we're pleased about is that um we're actually celebrating learning um as an organization and i agree fully uh nicola with your point is that it, it needs to be made easier for our teams to efficiently be using it first point uh, second is just the the true nailing of an insight um for me as a marketer is absolutely critical almost no work can go forward without a really, really strong insight. And I think when we're dealing with such high change environments, uh, which COVID has has clearly afforded us, um, there's absolutely no better way than to really be super sharp or to get our teams or to get yourselves really, really, really clear on nailing the insight um, when it comes to strong marketing work. Um, and then finally, the power of analytics. I mean, you need not convince me I'm a huge fan. Um, I think analytics on the back end, to be honest with you, is almost the power of any strong marketing organization. And again, it comes down to that good insight, very sharp, targeted, and highly personalized. And when you've got that combination, a high learning agile, um, a strong insight generated, and of course, a strong analytical environment, you almost can't go wrong um, because you, you're so sharp um, and your focus is, is dead on. So what a great point. Um, I don't see a lot of organizations, sadly, that are showing this high learning, high agile, high adaptability environment. And some are almost a bit shaken now with COVID and, and still almost going into that, that post-recovery phase. But I think the organizations where we see high agile responses, those are the ones, in my view, that will be future forward. And they're looking ahead and thinking, right, you know, what do we learn from this whole experience and how are we going to do things differently uh, going forward? But what a great question. Really, really cool. Thanks, Nicolo. Um, Nicole, for small companies, one man, two man entrepreneur businesses, home businesses, uh, small, medium enterprises, it's difficult to get all that analytics and find the time to sift through all of that. What advice do you have for small businesses in terms of understanding uh, their logs, understanding the analytics, understanding the data that they have? Yeah, I think there are a couple of things that obviously are complex and cost and which uh, I respect for any new business would, would be complicated. But there are a couple that are really easy. And um, for me, it just starts with really strong listening. Um, you know, that takes a bit of time, but that could really be the bullseye. What really, where, where are your consumers? What are they saying? Uh, what are they into? What are their lifestyles? Who are they? You know, getting a real intimacy with who you're trying to target. Um, you almost can never go wrong uh, with, with really investing there, you know, whether that's you or, or a small team or whether you have a, a you know, an efficient, cost efficient partner to do that for you. Um, with any strong marketing work, it starts with, you know, getting really intimate with knowing who your consumer is and knowing them deeply, uh, your shopper, your consumer. Um, and then second to that, I think, you know, there's analytics and then there's analytics. I mean, I'm also, you know, we can't <laughs> paralyze ourselves, but there's just some fundamentals, um, which I believe, again, if, if, you're, if you've got a, a short data log um, that you're mining and generating some insights for yourself, again, really user friendly. Um, in fact, you'd be amazed at the moment with just how many really useful digital tools there are already um, in being able to, to mine data. In fact, there are even some, some really pretty awesome free tools online uh, looking at doing your own statistical data mining. Again, you, you, don't, you don't need to agree to do that. They, they literally walk you through step by step. So for any young business or new business or, or early entrepreneur that's getting going, I, oh, I'm just it's such an exciting place because there are so many tools um, that could come you could, could come in your aid. So I would say listen uh, and then look out there. You know, fish for for something that might help you. It could be uh, easier than you think. And I have a live example. For example, our teams have been initially struggling with collaborative work and. Uh, we in the beginning of COVID, we were just really trying to keep teams engaged and keep our marketeers connected with our cross-functional teams. And one of the things that we've early, early come across um, is, your, is using Mural, for example, as a digital online, amazing. Every single thing we could do together, we can now also do online uh, by, for example, using Mural as a, as a digital footprint for collaborative work. Um, all of us from all over the place, all over different places of the world, you know, we can do that together. In fact, just a few days ago, we had, you know, some colleagues from Nespresso uh, sitting in Europe. We were here in South Africa. We had uh, Swiss colleagues. We had American colleagues. And literally, we ideated and developed some 5G innovation work, you know, from different locations wow. in the world. So, you know, you name it, there's a digital answer. Um, and so I would say fish, fish, fish until you find something that works. 
Um, and a lot of the time, they're super cost efficient solutions as well. Uh, the final question coming through uh, is on LinkedIn. Survival for micro businesses will depend on availability of the branding budget. Do you agree with that statement or do you disagree? Yeah, I, I disagree uh, on, on the latter part. I think that uh, you know, brand budgets are there and they exist, but brand budgets are also evolving. And so for me, if you're a micro business, it's about staying true and on point and on trend. You know, what would big brands uh, need in future? Uh, and again, it's for me, it's this micro targeting, digitalization, big on interconnectedness. And uh, you know, if if we're looking at big budget at the moment, we're looking again to get every every round um, back in terms of ROI and, and efficiency. So for me, if you're a young entrepreneur and you're going to find creative ways to unlock that, to integrate, to connect, um, or I absolutely see a future for you. Um, on the counter side, I know that big business is also obviously under some pressure. And of course, those budgets are coming, of, of course, also under scrutiny. But again, I think it comes back to the efficiency. You know, if we can show that we can be spending, but we're going to stay super efficient or even gain efficiency um, in, in these new times, that for me will be, again, another great way on how micro business is going to really tap into that and, again, find that sweet spot, um, find that, that value proposition that, that meets your needs, but also the needs of those that you'll be servicing. Nicole, just a comment saying thank you. Very important. Thank you so much from Anonymous. Nicole, really great having you join us here and, and answer our marketing and business related questions. Just before you go, what should any, what platform or app should any business, uh, upcoming business, uh, established business be or have on their phone or be on? So in terms of social media, what, what should they be on? And in terms of an app, what app should they have on their phone that will definitely help their business uh, succeed? Yeah, so there's so many. It's hard for me to even choose one. <laughs> um, we uh, we are very much uh, in, in a, a mindset. You know what, what what apps are sort of also helping us to build uh, agile mindsets as marketeers. And in fact, we've started embarking on a lot of coding um, interests. Even though we're marketeers, we want to really get into coding. Why? Because it's wow. helping us think about uh, questions that we were not answering. It's helping us think about, uh, you know, seeing the problems differently, about it, defining a problem, but also that understanding that, um, you know, there's always a solve. And by issuing sharp and clear and concise direction, we can solve for anything. So there are many of the, those those early introduction coding apps, if not already, um, you know, get your hands on some. In fact. I'm doing even doing coding now with my kids um, and uh, just Brilliant. absolutely incredible. So I would say anything in that early coding training suite um, in terms of that of the apps are really, really cool. And uh, we're working on a, using a couple of those now uh, with the team. Um, the one I really just love at the moment, even for me learning, um, I'm, a, I'm a novice coder, <laughs> but I'm doing a lot of Osmo uh, with my kids as well, which, uh, which is really, really incredible. And again, it's about what's teaching Osmo? So Osmo, it's a pretty agile, um, it's an interface platform. Um, so again, you would load it in um, and it, it's basically a, it's an, it's a game, it's a gamification of coding. So for example, yes. your kids, um, in, in this case, it would be uh, the pizza shop and then the kids are learning how to firstly code in to, to construct the pizza. Then we do the business case of where would you market the pizza? Uh, then you would sell the pizza and you would get change in. So uh, again, a, an amazing integration of, of coding meets interface, meets problem solving, meets skills transfer. And it's just so exciting because I think this is where the future is going. Um, again, that you know we can teach almost anything um, using digital solutions, using gamification. And of course, it's fun. So we love, we love it. I'm going to actually share the details. If anyone's just missed that, I'll share the details down below so that we can learn. Uh, this is something completely unique. We've never actually spoken about coding on Marketing Monday, so it's something we're definitely going to have to touch on again. Nicole, thank sure. you so much for joining us today. Thank you for showing us the packaging of the new products. Just hold it up one more time just before we go uh, say goodbye. There we go. That's uh, brand new from the team. From the new the babies. Slay, the... There we go. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you so much. much for joining us and for answering all our questions and assisting us as entrepreneurs and new business and uh, more established business owners uh, getting answers on various marketing related things. Thank you for your time. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me and all the best to everyone listening. And uh, like we said, sometimes it's just about taking a bit of risk. So enjoy the day. Thanks, Liesl. Thanks, Nicole. Taking a bit of risk, some advice from Nicole Ruiz, Business Executive Officer for Coffee and Beverages from Nestle, showcasing their new range that they launched in the middle of lockdown. I have commented down below with the virtual launch 
So you can go and take a look to see what went down. If there are any questions, if Nicole didn't get around to answering your questions, uh, we will get around to answering them on LinkedIn, YouTube, and on Facebook. And if you've got a guest that you'd like me to interview next week on Marketing Monday, you feel there's someone in your community doing great things when it comes to marketing, business, anything around uh, small businesses, medium businesses, and just growing and surviving during these difficult times, feel free to reach out to me, creative at the giraffebrand.com. Thank you for all the messages coming through. Florence saying thank you to Nicole and myself for, for watching. Uh, Norcia Felix saying thank you for the advice. Zarina also giving great advice. And I know, Zarina, you'll probably love the, love the coding advice that came through. From me, Lethal V, we'll catch you again uh, next week, Monday, for Marketing Monday Live at noon, South African time. Reach out to me at any time if you've got any marketing, branding, or business-related questions, or potential guests that you'd like me to interview here on Marketing Monday. See you next Monday. Cheers.